The below is an excerpt from Foolish, Tales of Assimilation, Determination, and Humiliation by Sarah Cooper. How did a Jamaican girl grow up to be the President of the United States? Well, it's a spellbinding tale that involves zero intrigue and absolutely no international espionage, unless you think TikTok is international espionage, which, valid. My 2020 started out a little rocky but otherwise hunky-dory. I was living in a mostly windowless apartment in Brooklyn with Jeff. Jeff was working at Google, and I was working from home and contemplating going back to Google because my comedy career was going nowhere. Like a lot of you, I had spent the better part of the last four years pretty glued to social media, rage reading, and doom scrolling. I was addicted to social media. I was addicted to Twitter. For almost four years, I had been watching everything Trump did with despair and sick fascination. And I gotta be honest, I was really starting to regret voting for the guy. The thing that I hated most about Trump, among the actual reasons, was that he was exactly the kind of president I'd be. I would be like, how could he not read his intelligence briefings? But the thing is, I've never shown up prepared to a meeting in my life. I'd get so mad he spent all morning in bed tweeting and watching TV, but I was also in bed all morning tweeting and watching TV. I love McDonald's. I heard he once had the Secret Service get him McDonald's in the middle of the night, and I've done that, too, with Uber Eats. Uber Eats was my Secret Service. I love hotels and my steak well done. We both have degrees in economics, but neither of us understands money, and we've both been photographed with toilet paper stuck to our shoe. I guess the difference is, if I was president, I would have at least made an attempt to hide all that. Maybe that's where I went wrong in life. When the world shut down, Jeff and I were all stuck at home, like everyone else. There were no shows or open mics, so I poured all my energy into making stuff for my first love, the internet. And a few weeks later I found my muse. During one of his early COVID press conferences, Trump said, We're gonna form a committee. I'm gonna call it a committee. And we're gonna make decisions. And we're gonna make decisions fairly quickly. And I hope they're going to be the right decisions. Dude made it sound like he invented committees and everyone around him nodded like it made sense. It seemed like everyone supported this nonsense and maybe I was the one who was out to lunch. The whole administration was a charade. It was gaslighting 101. No, no, it was advanced gaslighting. He was pulling off being president with smoke and mirrors. I decided to lip-sync it on this new app my nephews Ryan and Tyler showed me, called TikTok. I wasn't trying to be Trump. I was trying to be the me I never got to be. The me I always wanted to be. The schmoozer. The guy who used a bunch of words but said nothing and got away with it. What a dream it would be to get away with something. Anything. That first video was so much to fun to make but it didn't go viral. And I'm the type of person who moves on quickly to the next thing. I stopped watching his press conferences. They were unbearable anyway. But on April 23rd, Jeff came out of his office and said, Sarah, you gotta see this. Trump had given a press conference, a press conference that would go on to live in Lysol infamy, where he said, We hit the body, with a tremendous, whether it's ultraviolet or just a very powerful light. And I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're gonna test it? And then I said, supposing we brought the light inside the body, which you can do, either through the skin or in some other way. And I think you said you're gonna test that too, sounds interesting. And then I see the disinfectant knocks it out, in a minute, one minute, and is there a way we can do something like that? By injection, inside, or almost a cleaning. Because you see it gets in the lungs, and it does a tremendous number on the lungs, so it'd be interesting to check that. So that you're gonna have to use medical doctors, right? But it sounds, it sounds interesting to me. I had no notes. It was a perfect clip. He was so earnest. He genuinely thought what he was saying made sense. And I wanted to become this man, the man that I saw. This man who had absolutely no idea how he sounded, who clearly saw himself as deeply intelligent and thoughtful. Here he was, humbly asking people to listen to his brilliant idea. I threw on a navy blue blazer and got to work, in the living room, in the kitchen kneeling next to the sink, and back to the living room, just using whatever was around. I took off the blazer and put in clip-in bangs to create the version of myself that was listening to this nonsense and shot that. Two. I did it all very quickly.